all today's an alternative paleontology. How would you interpret the skeleton of a giant creature that you've never seen before? Would it be harder to be accurate if the creature was formerly obese? Do hummingbirds harbor a dark secret that links them to the cabal? And what the hell is this thing? Stay tuned to find out on In the Shrink Wrap. All Today's is a section from the book All Yesterdays created by C.M. Kozman, Darren Nash, and John Conway. The section is written from the perspective of imaginary future scientists who are trying to interpret the animals that we live around today. You see, no one was around back in the days of when ancient animals were vibing, which means that some of the assumptions we make about these animals are entirely wrong, some in very comedic ways. Following this theme, this literature explores how a scientist from a species far in the future would reconstruct animals we live around Around using only their bones as a guide. It shows the potential for scientific mistakes in an entertaining and educational manner. One of the most comical real-life examples of this is Homo de Luvi. This creature may not be realistic or even feasible in any sense of the word, but it's so weird that I had to give it the starting spot. It was a giant salamander skeleton that was thought to belong to a humanoid being. This thing is so incredibly misinterpreted that even an infant whose soft spot has been modified for use as a cereal bowl could see this thing is not a bipedal human. It was discovered by one Swiss scholar, Johann Schinsch... I don't know, man. Saying that's a human and then calling yourself a scholar is a bit like drinking a beer at an AA meeting. Something don't add up. Yo, real quick, reading directly from a Wikipedia article I got after googling Homo de Luvi, in his book Lithographia Helvetica from 1726, Johann Jacob Schinsch described the Miocene fossil dug up in Yarnsch as Homo de Luvi testes, believing it to be the remains of a human that got drowned in the biblical deluge. The fossil was about 1 meter 3 feet long, lacked its tail and hind legs, and thus could be interpreted as showing some resemblance to the remains of a violently trampled human child. The scientists interpreted hummingbirds as blood-sucking parasites. Their beak could easily be seen as something to pierce an animal's hide like a hypodermic needle. Their skeletal anatomy suggests that they could cling to the bellies of large terrestrial creatures with their little foot claws and use their beaks like vampires to suction out the life juices. This hypothetical hummingbird may also use their face spikes to pierce eggshells and lap up the nutritious fluids inside. From the bones of baboons, they've recreated this leathery, wrinkled terrestrial predator that gives me major satyriac vibes. A far cry from the bright, colorful, flabbily budded creatures that we live amongst today. The fangs of baboons are lined with grooves that are usually signifiers for if the animal is venomous. They also have a complicated sinus structure that could be misinterpreted as the locations for venom glands. Because of this, the scientists think that the baboon would track its prey before sealing the deal with an envenomated nail in the coffin. One of the most common mistakes paleontologists make when reconstructing animals has been affectionately named shrink wrapping. Oftentimes, when people only have bones to go off of, they will reconstruct the creature highlighting the bony ridges in its body, almost like they took a skin and literally wrapped it around a skeleton. Without the guides of the animal's fleshy bits, it's very easy to create an incredibly inaccurate representation of the beast you're trying to recreate. So basically, it's like when you get a trash bag and a vacuum cleaner and it vacuum seals you and some people get off to it, but instead of a creepy man in a hefty plastic bag, it's an animal skeleton very tightly encased in its own skin. For example, this is a flawed representation of a common house cat. You can see here that it's undergone a form of shrink wrapping with a clear skull shape to its head. This shrink wrapped finger boy monster is apparently a spider monkey. The scientists misattributed the skeleton to be an arboreal predatory species of human. They have long bony fingers with curved talons on the ends, theorized for used in fishing the intestines out of a poor small rodent's rectum. Well, the book didn't theorize that, but I just did, and now it's in your brain and there's nothing you can do about it. The mouth has the same fangs as a regular spider monkey would, but because they portrayed it with a skin tighter than a Botox addict, they look much bigger as a result. Take a quick guess what this wasteland horse of the apocalypse is. Unless you've read the book, you probably won't be guessing zebra. Every identifiable characteristic about the zebra is absent because every identifiable characteristic about the zebra was apparently only skin deep. There's a lesson in there somewhere about not being shallow. Nah, just goofing. This is nature. The only lesson here is don't be food. Since hooves aren't bone, they weren't preserved as well as the rest of the skeleton. So scientists had to do some guesswork, and they guessed wrong and gave it one 
long, horrifying, wiggly toe on each foot. This thing that looks like a goose that I hit with a flamethrower is a swan. Instead of the waterfowl we know from those hilarious YouTube channels of them attacking children, they were represented as a bare, wrinkly skinned, nightmarish creature with talons used to skewer their prey alive and slurp it off their knife hand like an hors d'oeuvre while it slowly loses consciousness. In the same vein as the swan is what was supposed to be a hornbill. Instead of the bright plumage we're used to, these things look like a chicken that's been processed for cooking with a sea snail stapled to its head. Some is very clear when one looks at their representation of whales. A sperm whale was thought to look like the aquatic dinosaurs of the past. This makes me wonder if the paleontologists who interpreted marine dinosaurs are just editing their fossil Instagram photos to make them look skinnier. They turned the bowhead whale into a serpentine gulper eel looking body with a big old mouth for swallowing big old prey items. That may look ridiculously off base from the animal we know today, but look at this thing's body and then look at this thing's skeleton. Honest to god, it does kind of look like a snake creature from its bones. Another large animal that had elaborate structures made from soft tissue that these scientists will never know about is the elephant. They saw the skull and didn't immediately think trunk. They gave it a weird fleshy face sack for fleshy face sack related activities. While you can cockily lie in the comments and say that you'd think of it, even if you would, would you really be confident that the other scientists wouldn't laugh you out of the room if you claim that thing has a dick on its face? This is how they would interpret a rhinoceros. Very clearly, it's missing its horn. Despite how very funny I would be for saying horny and bone in the same sentence, the rhino horn is actually made out of keratin, so it would not be preserved for as long as the calcium-enriched body support sticks. Instead, these scientists have observed the anatomy of its back and decided that it had a large sail-like protrusion coming out of it like a spinosaurus. I don't know why they think this, but it looks cool, so now I believe rhinos look like this. They theorized that this flappy doodle would be used to regulate body heat. Nah, I'm just kidding, that's a regular old land shark, but I had you though, didn't I? This is supposed to be a cow. It was represented as a light and dainty, fast-moving creature. To any human being that has ever seen a cow, this is not what they look like. They're either jacked to all hell, or look like they survive entirely on the McDonald's that they will soon be turned into. If you ever see a skinny cow, it's likely very sick. Without all the muscle slash obesity that would be rotted away with time, there's no way a scientist would know how bulky these animals would be. So with only a skeleton to guess from, this isn't that bad of a reconstruction. This is a recreation of a toad. It walks instead of the hopping motion that we know that toads do. Don't worry, they realized their mistake because they saw the structure of the legs is different than most quadrupeds. To rectify their mistake, they then said it stood upright, signaling that the entirety of the frog and toad literature is canon in all today's erroneous speculative evolution universe. So close, but yet so far. This is what they made when they saw an iguana skeleton. Basically, a rat iguana, and that's it. But pretty cool, right? If iguanas were mammals, they'd probably cause a serious problem specifically just in Florida, because they're super invasive in Florida. With all the ecosystem damage of an invasive species and all the rabies from a regular raccoon, this thing would be the ultimate double threat. When they saw a snake skeleton, they thought to themselves, well, we've never seen a reptile without legs, and we're damn sure not gonna start today. To avoid seeing something without legs, they made a reptile wiener dog and assumed that the legs weren't fossilized properly. This may sound like a stupid mistake, but it's kind of commonplace for paleontologists to assume that not every piece of a fossil is intact. So this is definitely a mistake that we're already making in real life and just don't know it. This goofy looking dude is what they thought a manatee was. It takes on the same form we'd see from buffaloes. They only found the skull, so why wouldn't it be on land? They don't have any evidence otherwise. I would love it if we farmed these things instead of cows, but if that was the case, I would be saying the opposite because I only want it because it's weird and I'm bored. Speaking of incorrectly classifying water species, this is what they reconstructed after finding a hippopotamus skull. It shows a monsterfied version of the original vegetarian creature we know today. We associate things like strong jaws and large teeth with predators, but in relying on this, we can make the mistake of mislabeling creatures. The scientists thought that this creature was capable of chewing through the metal of cars, which they can't do that, R right? Right? This is the vulture, and I had to record it from the bathroom because I'm a fucking idiot and didn't record it when I had time. You got a problem with it? 
take it up with the bots. Because apparently their ADHD is worse than a squirrel's, and I don't have time to record it correctly before they dropkick my content under the fridge. It looks kind of like a penguin mixed with a pterodactyl. Instead of the traditional bird wing structure, they attached it in both the arms and the thighs, like a typical flying dinosaur. Arm scrotum rating 6 out of 10. If you like this video, you should like, comment, subscribe with all notifications enabled. Do whatever you can to please keep boosting my robot good boy points. If you want to see more spec suit content, please support this video, because if it does well, that's how I know people want a sequel. I want to shout out the artists, uh, Saba Alien Fish, Noah Westenberger, and Kawasaki. They're all great artists, and you should go check out their page. They really helped this video come together, because I have been all over the place and have not been able to draw for a significant amount of time. Uh, as always, like, sub, hit the bell, and I will see you all in hell. Thank <laughs> you.